On this week's episode of the Ritual and Misery podcast, Alamogordo, still not a great place. Right. Uh, you must pay taxes there and have contracts. Uh, yeah, but uh, for a very low price, you can watch The Dark Crystal on Netflix. Yes, you can. And uh, for a slightly higher price, you can watch It Chapter 2. But the only thing that's important this week is we have Remedy Alpine. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's us, right? <laughs> In the house. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 227 for Thursday, the 12th of September, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and these guys are Remedy Alpine. Let's give yourself an introduction. Hey, how you doing? I'm Luke Bouchots. I'm uh, the operations officer for uh, Remedy Alpine, which means that I think up crazy things to do, and then these guys talk me off a cliff, literally. And uh, I'm Dave Joslin. I'm, uh, I guess, the chief executive yeah. guy yeah, that's uh, you. for Remedy Alpine, mm-hmm. which means I write a lot of policies and then try to follow him up a mountain. <laughs> and I'm Eric Collier, and uh, I'm the numbers guy. Um, don't yeah. ask me to do any of your math or calculations, but <laughs> <laughs> or or troubleshoot your computer when it shuts down because he's basically just like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't know. And I always follow these two <laughs> up the mountain. <laughs> and no, 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 no. His thing was, let me build you a new computer. <laughs> like, dude, yeah. I can do it myself. No, but let me build it for you. <laughs> or buy a Mac. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that, that's that's the intent. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, dude. Um. So this week I've been in. Taxes and contracts, hell. I wouldn't call it hell. I've been actually writing contracts for clients, which is a whole new aspect of uh, the self-employed life for me. Yeah, so I I imagine this has everything to do with what you announced last week with your new LLC. Yes, it does, actually. Amazing. And congratulations, by the way. I wasn't on the show last week to say it to you in in person. But, um, yeah, that's awesome, man. It uh, it feels pretty good. Um, Audio Aperture Media LLC. It sounds it rolls off the tongue. It doesn't, but it's what I came <laughs> up with. So fuck it. Um, I like. It. Uh, now for the three of you, have you uh, have you come up with uh, have you done an LLC or or done the the business license and taxes and all that shit? Yeah, we uh, we formed as an LLC uh, November of two thousand seventeen. Yep. Yeah. How'd that process go? It would. Forming the company and getting it legitimate wasn't that hard. I've 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 built another mountain company once before, and so I was familiar with the process. But uh, going through the nonprofit yeah. uh, route and the IRS form ten twenty three and the fifty seven thousand fucking pages that are the <laughs> IRS form ten twenty three, um, <laughs> the adopting nonprofit bylaws and being a legitimate nonprofit uh, that was. A very uh, long learning process, lots of hours, lots of thumb cramps, texting back and forth, trying to align on things, and then reviewing bylaws, reviewing uh, new articles of incorporation. We had to adopt different articles of incorporation as a nonprofit that had to have specific things, checking things against federal code and then Alaska state code. Um, Yeah, it was was a long process. (laughs) Did we get a guest on here that actually knows what they're talking about? Like this is this is not. Yeah, normal. we fucked up. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Kent, uh, apparently you have decided once again that Alamogordo is not great, because that's what it uh, says in the show notes. Like it literally I, it, says Alamogordo is not great. Who's been to Alamogordo? Holloman Air Force Base. I Anybody? have. Oh my. Yeah. I'm, I might be the only visitor that year, though. No. I've <laughs> Maybe. Been there. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you where it is. No. It, and, and people that live there can't tell you where anything else is. <laughs> so it works out. <laughs> so I, all right. So for military listeners, if, if you get stationed at Holloman, like consider like five day option and uh, BOP. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this. Okay. Holloman Air Force Base is a good base. I like the base. The 49th Wing is a great wing to be a part of. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly unfortunate, however, that we are forced to be in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Um, I mean, it's it's not it's not great, right? I mean, it's not. But yesterday, <laughs> like it hit a low. So, <clears throat> I I get home from work yesterday, 
and I receive a text message from my baby mama saying, uh, check this out. And it was a link to a Facebook post that was posted by the, the school system here, the Alamogordo Public School uh, uh, Corporation or whatever the hell you want to call it. Mm-hmm. It basically said, hey, we got a phone call that there might be a school shooter tomorrow. That's basically it. Like, okay, it was like a full paragraph of text, mm-hmm. but basically all it said. Mm-hmm. No follow-up. Zero. So nobody showed up to school the next day. <laughs> I'd, I'd say about, I don't know, probably somewhere between a quarter and half of the, the student body did not go to school today. Right. Uh, the follow-up occurred this morning, like mid, like almost lunchtime, uh, where they posted a message from the Alamogordo Police Department saying, yeah, so there was like a, a somebody called in a, um, uh, we're pretty sure what's a hoax. <laughs> and um, yeah, so like that's illegal too. So let us know if you know anything about it. That was the follow-up. That was some great messaging no phone call to by parents, the school board no, there. No, no instructions, like yeah. no indication on what to do with this information. No, uh, I, I will say that here in Wasilla... <laughs> we had three bomb slash shooting threats last year in, at Colony High School, or the year before last. Year before last. Yeah, two years. Ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the third and final one resulted in an arrest. Yeah. So that's of, not of, a, of a student. Because there's been there's been bomb threats in the past, and that's mm-hmm. you know, I mean that ha- I mean that's what happened. I mean hell, I think when you and I were in in high school like somebody did that like that's no, something I, well i i don't know about indiana i know in california we just had race wars <laughs> well yeah yeah yeah. but right. i mean these, these these things happen right but but to me like it's incredibly irresponsible for the school social media director or whoever the fuck decided to post this on yeah. Facebook. not con not actually contacting me i would have not known about this whatsoever right cause you're not on the facebook <laughs> right so somebody sent it to me and I, I, okay, what do we do with this? So uh, Isaac, a high school student, he stayed home today. He left school early yesterday anyway because he wasn't feeling well. So mm-hmm. this is kind of like a, re, a sick recovery day for him anyway. But even without that, he probably would not have attended school today because what do you do? So like, can you can you imagine being that kid though? That's like, mom, dad, there's an active shooter threat, and they're like, get on the bus. <laughs> that uh, that would have been my dad. My dad would have been like, are you sick? Like, Do you like, have a that, test? That's what, we're, that's what we're hoping for, Johnny. Get on the bus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here, son. Here's your so here's your concealed today, carry. <laughs> so then today, this afternoon, the the Alamogordo Daily News. Yes, I'm calling you out. Alamogordo Daily News is the garbagest. I'm making that word. Uh, That's a word. Can now use it. Garbage <laughs> media outlet in existence. Alamogordo Daily News. ADN, you have say, competition. It beats. <laughs> yeah, we, we it have beats the, we the have frontiersmen. The, we have the Anchorage Daily News here, so we got the same. I, dude, I bet it's I bet it's better. I bet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so this article contradicted not only the the Facebook post that it was quoting. Um, but it was also contradicted itself within the article. Um, also, uh, grammar and spelling errors throughout yes. this seven we, article or seven uh, paragraph article. We have that paper uh, too. <laughs> that also that also still had no conclusion or follow up or right. anything whatsoever. <sighs> this, yeah, and also <laughs> no no public statement from the police other than what the school system. Um, put on their facebook page right yep i mean i'm imagining like their their metro reporter is probably somebody that's like in my mind he's like 300 pounds and doesn't really wear pants (laughs) (laughs) yeah i don't know um aka my idol (laughs) (laughs) um I would be remiss if I did not say out loud that we have M Beam in the chat tonight. It's been a long time since he's been jo- been able to join us in chat. Oh, what's and, up? And he is apparently not wearing pants, so he's covering for the rest of us. That's awesome. Well Thank played, M Beam. Well played. Amazing. But anyway, so um, 
Mm-hmm. I'm a Gordo. Ladies yeah. And no. no I, I think I think you should when when you finally get off your ass and mail me the shit you're supposed to mail me. You should include an uh, Amagordo Daily newspaper, and I'll include an, uh, an Anchorage Daily News and send that to you. I don't think they they print them. Oh, Instead, they're not even in print. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's online and is part of the USA Today network where it's like, you have two free articles. Subscribe now for however many dollars. Oh. No, oh. no so we got yeah. in, okay. here so in the valley. Okay, is more junk than ours is because we can, we can actually just go buy yeah. a paper copy of ours. So here in the yeah. valley, we got the Frontiersman, which yeah. claims, you know, they have four former reporters that have won Pulitzer Prizes. So they're like, Pulitzer Prize winning, you know, periodical. No. No, yeah. so well, bad. <laughs> Regularly no. misspells headlines on the front of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, okay. Touche. <laughs> All right. Um, the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Now, by show of hands, how many on the show right now tonight remember the Dark Crystal, the original show? Oh, of course. I've actually watched the, the new one, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember it from when I was... I watched it like a year ago. But you, Small, but you but you don't remember. You don't you haven't I mean, watched it recently. No, uh, well I know Netflix like you know is putting a new one out. Yeah, I think it dropped like this week or something. Last yeah. week, yeah. yeah. Age of Resistance. This is I actually no a TV show. I was surprised. Kent. It's like made of Muppets, isn't it? it, it did you is. watch? <laughs> did you watch it, Amos? I watched. Oh, well, I slept through some of it and I watched a lot of it. Um, <laughs> the, the 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 babies were watching it and I was watching them watch it. So. Um, hey, no spoiler alerts, by the way. I well, it's I'm, Muppets. I'm only what like three spoil? episodes in. <laughs> no, there's there's actually a really great story arc to it. And so, well, okay, so I always loved the Dark Crystal. Like that's I've I've watched that movie probably three times over the last year. Right. Like, we, I, we 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 named my ex girlfriend's sister Fizz Gig. On one of the characters, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it turns out... It turns out is the species and not the the, the proper name. Right. Yeah, well, I mean... Uh, That's after the fact, though. So, one of the things... (laughs) Michelle was a bit of her own species anyway. One of the things that I loved about... (laughs) Right. One of the things I loved about The Dark Crystal is is it's very lore-heavy. And I am a super lore nerd. So, I have explored the the backstory and history of... Mm -hmm. Planet Thra and like all the, you know, there's all, the, all of that, right? And this TV series is nothing but lore, just thick fucking lore, yeah. and it's great. Yeah, uh, I I really enjoyed it. I, I couldn't help but think of sports. of Oprah sports thing on <laughs> on, on the uh, yeah before the show we were talking about the uh, the little little thing that you know I've got a warrior and and World of Warcraft and all this other stuff and. It goes on and on and on at the end. It says, now you know how I feel when you won't show up about, about <laughs> sports. Right, so right. we're just bringing that further into life on this right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to start <laughs> quoting sports. <laughs> you sports tard. Good I job. have no clue what you're talking about, <laughs> yeah. I will admit. Yeah. I'm envisioning like witch Muppets. Yeah, that's pretty much you're it. You're not far off. You're not far off. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So the thing that I really liked about the show, though, is it kept the original style of all the art as, as in the Muppets themselves. The movements, yep. the voices, it's all in the same the same tone, and it's beautiful. It's great. Why yep. s- they didn't like reimagine it and, and do all kinds of funny new shit or anything else. They no, kept it the, very the basic and very was, simple. The voice talent was amazing. They had like an all-star cast. Mark Hamill yeah. voiced one of them, the yeah. scientist. Uh, I mean, Mark Hamill like voiced the Joker for like 30 years. That's how he Hell, paid yes, his bills. Yeah. So. <laughs> The best Joker ever, Mark. Hanks. He did. Yes. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. It's it's documented fact. <laughs> um, something else that that you've been watching though, uh, dude. So, I thought because months and months of build up <laughs> by you. Yep. Opening weekend. I'm gonna go see it. And, chapter two. And, and, and it opened on a drill weekend. How the fuck am I supposed to make that happen, dude? You just go. That's when you have just no responsibilities, right? <laughs> Nobody take missed all, him. <laughs> take all 14 of your children with you. Yeah, right. Exactly. He only has 13. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah we, well, we, we ditched one in the backyard. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so Endbeam says three hours. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's it's almost three hours long. Oh, my and, gosh. Yes. But, the, but it's it's I enjoyed it, man. Like, it's so good. Like, when I heard that it was three hours, like, on the drive to the movie theater, I was like, oh, 
fuck. <laughs> um, but no, like the movie ended and I was like, holy shit, has it been three hours? Hell yes. It's, uh, it's been three hours. Did, like, it's, did you uh, did you guys watch the first one? The new yes. version? Yes. Oh, you're talking about... Oh, yeah. Know? I definitely watched it. Yeah. I was a huge fan. My mom read me the book when I was a kid. I, don't, I, don't I saw really the whole do. series. Horror. Original TV series. I don't watch yeah. scary movies after 2 o'clock. <laughs> PM? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really do horror. <laughs> I thought it was a comedy. It's a clown in it. Bloom. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. You know. yeah well, it it was it's a, a bit kids of a movie, movie, really. Yeah, like it it chapter two. There was a lot of comedic elements in there, like yeah. big, laugh out loud moments. Uh, yeah, but it, it's very much a horror movie. At the I same hope time. Bill Hader got his head eaten. That's all I hope. Quit, hey, no spoiler alert. No, I'm just saying, like he eats heads, right? I mean, well, he's Bill actually Hader's funny. Being. So, like, by eating him, he'd be funnier. Hater, hater. <laughs> well, no, yeah. I like Bill Hader. I just hope he get it, got eaten. <laughs> did like, you notice? My seventeen-year-old did go see it on the opening night, and he's a scary movie buff. And he said that it was uh, well done, and he appreciated it. And I was like, "Well, you saw it at seven o'clock at night, and I don't see scary movies after two p.m." <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's yeah. the scariest movie you've seen? Huh? I'm just curious. What's Die the scariest hurt. movie you've seen? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Cujo, man. <laughs> that shit gave me nightmares for weeks. Yeah, I still I remember, my bloody Valentine. Hey, I still um, haven't finished the book or the movie of the original Pet Cemetery. The scariest oh, the movie I've good. ever seen awesome. movie was uh, well, it's a toss up. There was uh, Event Horizon, which yes. terrified me when I was like twelve, scared the living crap out of me. And then there was this other show when I was like six called Yum Yums in Playland, where they had to go in the oh, sewer. <laughs> so scary. Well, if that scared you, you definitely don't want to watch it. Like it is. Not... So Children of the Corn, when it came out, there's the book or the movie? The movie. Nightmares for weeks. And I, my kids see it now and they're like, that was hilarious. That's hilarious. Like, That's so Get funny. the fuck out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Eric, you said you have read the book, right? Or had it read to you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have the audio book, but I don't have 40 hours to commit to it. Right. And I do own the book itself, but again, I don't have, what, four months to commit to it. Well, I, I read it in like four days, but I was in high school and not Dang. getting good grades. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the other option. Um, yeah, I, I, we have the book. I bought it for David not too long ago, and he hasn't finished reading it. And I told him if you, had, if you finished it before we... Because it was summertime. He had all the time in the world. Um, if he finished it before the opening day, then I would take him to see the movie opening day. And I think he's still in, like, chapter four. <laughs> so, Well, it ties no. into... Dean says he's, he's still upset they're not naming the new Shining That's movie. what I'm laughing Shining. about right now. Even it's shinier. Even shinier. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, well, I mean, let's, let's see how that affected things this week. Welcome to Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of September 9th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay, brought to you by Bacteria. It's the only culture some people have. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Game Nights in last place with $211.8 million. Team The Vaughn Squad's in fifth place with $535.9 million. Team Ever Drink is in fourth place with $775.7 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in third place with $1,012.9 million. Team Retro Misery is in second place with $1,034.4 million. And with $104.5 million from It Chapter 2 in first place, it's Team Movie Party with $1,363.7 million million dollars that's your final stream team movie draft minute all totals are accurate as of september 11th 2019 <laughs> so there's actually a couple weeks left yeah. of the draft but it's it's over um your prediction of last week of uh it going head to head between us and dkg yeah no we extended our lead somehow yeah um <laughs> well yeah i think some people are still playing secret life of pets somewhere yeah or Spider-Man, maybe somewhere. I don't know. Some, we got some money, but um, Lion King is not continuing to make money. So mm. this is it. This is the this is the final this standings. Is the final standings. It's over. Uh, which which means the winter movie draft is coming up, oh, like geez. probably real soon, man. Like pr- probably like two or three weeks out. I need to. I need to. So, so for these guys here, let me explain a. The movie draft, have you guys done uh, fantasy football? Yeah, I used to do it with my brother. I've okay. done it a few years. Uh, yeah, yeah. Negative, I got other so things So basically you life. draft movies that are coming out in the next quarter. and Right, it's an auction system. Like and who's going to get the highest the, the, gross earnings? Yes, domestic. Awesome. Yeah, domestic, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so and that's how we that's how we play. And yeah. this is what the second time we've been in second place. Um, something like that. Second yeah, third. I think that new Midway movie coming out. It's going to be you know no box office gold. Not at all. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm I'm glad we came in second place because first place fucking smoked us dry, <laughs> beat us by three hundred million dollars or whatever. What was it that put them over to the top? Spider Man. They had Avengers. Oh. Avengers, yeah, of course. Yeah, they had Avengers and Captain Marvel and uh, Avengers, no, is like the highest had, grossing film ever. In, ever, yeah. ever. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. And you can't like multiple people can't draft a movie. No, no, okay. you, you, you bid up to, you have a hundred fake dollars. Oh, yeah, whoever won that, that, like, they could have probably went without any other movie in their line and still won. Yeah. Not, not quite, because, um, I mean, even, we, we didn't have Avengers, and we were, we're only about 300 million behind them, so. Yeah, yeah this, uh, this is, a, only this is a huge <laughs> summer, though, like, these numbers are astronomical. Can you imagine? That's how much people spent. It's been too hot. I'm going to go in an air conditioned movie theater all summer long if it's going to be record breaking well, heat waves. You know, that's how air conditioning became popular, right? Is because movie theaters would put it in there hmm. in the theater so that people would come see the movies during the summertime. Yeah. And then people were eventually like, hey, why can't we do this shit at home? <laughs> 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 like, like, legit, that's how, that's how air conditioning caught on. Uh, not here in Alaska, it didn't. Uh, air conditioning still hasn't caught on here in Alaska, and that's why I sweat my ass off all summer. It did for two weeks <laughs> when you I couldn't a, find an air conditioner in anywhere in the state. Yet. Yeah, yeah. For a while there, nobody like at the end of the heat wave, nobody could find an air conditioner anywhere. Um, or fan. Yeah, it was ridiculous. We had uh, fans. But congratulations to Team Movie Party. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll beat you next time. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't have a good segue, so patreon.com slash ritual misery. If you'd like to help fund this show and make this show ha- uh, possible and happening and everything else, and uh, help us do things like me sending that old mixer to Kent uh, today, really, because it got held up in uh, UPS because the lady didn't put the proper amount on. She was like, oh, we're only, only going to insure for $100. If that's fine, send it. And so I had to yeah, stop that's by there. What, that's what happened to what I'm supposed to be mailing you as well. Yeah? So it's still yeah. sitting at UPS? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> I, I, I told the lady at the UPS totally. store, I was like, he doesn't procrastinate, he just doesn't. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> totally sitting there. <laughs> it's you can you can still it's it's on the bookshelf behind you, Kent. I can see it in the box. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so so the <laughs> <laughs> and the that's a good gear, segue. <laughs> yeah, the of audio gear is is one of the the things that that. Uh, helps this show improve and if you want to be a part of the improvement process of this show god knows we need it um head over to <laughs> patreon.com slash ritual misery show us that you give a fuck and give us a buck i i just want to say i'm building a business on being able to make people sound awesome on their podcasts <laughs> and this is my chance each week to not give a shit i mean i care a lot but as far as like the pro- pro- professional production value, it's not in this show. This is like our fa- uh, happy, happy, fun time. And uh, <laughs> ritual and, and, mystery. It's a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did right. it. Uh, plus, every week it gives me a chance to bag on you, and you never have any good comebacks because you don't have wit. Um, oh, maybe man. he just cares about your feelings. No. Yeah, maybe he's deeply yes. invested in you as a person. No, Kent, <laughs> Kent knows too many of my secrets to care about my feelings. <laughs> um, all right, uh, it's about time for this, isn't it, Kent? It is. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. All right, while you explain the game, I'm going to get get some more beer. I need... That's a great idea. Yeah. You, you so explain, this, I'll get beer. This week's game is called 69. <laughs> I thought we were going to have three players of the game, so I did 12 questions instead of the traditional 10. Uh, turns out we have four players, which is really convenient that 12 goes in, or three and four go into 12. So, well, anyway, so we're going to have three questions apiece instead of four questions apiece. All of these questions have to do with 69. Um, let me explain. So 50 Favorite position. years ago, oh, no. on, on July 20th, 
50 years ago, man landed on the moon. So human beings visited another world for the first time ever 50 years ago. The year was 1969. Mm -hmm. So it got me thinking about 69, and I want to find out how much you guys know about 69. Oh. Oh. I'm almost ready. Hold on. <laughs> are you ready so, for six? No. So, uh, so are we answering questions about the number sixty-nine, the position sixty-nine, or the year sixty-nine? The Thank you for love. clarifying. Huh? All of the. That's above. a really good question, Amos. <laughs> <laughs> My aunt and uncle got married. All right, um, <laughs> Kent's. So, sixty-nine was uh, uh, the the year of Woodstock, and the only reason I remember that is because that's also the same year that. Kent's mom graduated from our alma mater high school in the first a, ever, the first class of Benton Central High School in Benton County, been, Indiana. Um, all right, so I'm going to go around the room. I'm going to go in order here. So I'm going to start with David. I'm going to go David, Eric, Luke, Amos. All right, I'm going to answer or uh, ask you a question, and then you're going that's, to attempt to answer it. That's not in order at all. Is this multiple choice? Or do I have to actually know the answer? You, 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 you just you, try and answer it. You have, like to, a, you have you know. to know the answer. C. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, are there extra points for the best made-up answer? <laughs> uh, sometimes there is. Okay. <laughs> Let's shoot. It better be damn good. <laughs> Challenge no accepted. Bread. All right. All cool. right. Uh, uh, David, who was the U.S. president in 69? Ooh, LBJ. Ooh. Shit. You, you don't want to help him out here. Uh, Johnson. <laughs> Uh, was, was a guess. Johnson the president? I don't know. Richard Milhouse Nixon was really? the president in 69. Ooh. Ooh. All right, Eric, on to you. This anti-Western dictator took control of Libya in 69. <laughs> really? I got I'll the give you a hint. <laughs> uh, he died in 2011 as a result of U.S. action. No, I'm embarrassed that I didn't know my own president, but I fucking know this one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. No, no. I uh, mean, Tola, I don't know. Just so you know, that means that you're playing the game right, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let David take it for extra credit. Um, to salvage my previous score, I'm going to go with uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Wow. Muammar Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Is it Gaddafi? It is. Gah. Good job, David. Gaddafi. Thank you. Gaddafi. Thank you. Gaddafi. Gaddafi. Yeah, gotta hack Luke, it. And back to it you, <laughs> what is the name of the riot in New York City that kicked off the gay rights movement in '69? Uh, Just say Harvey Milk. Well, I mean, is it the Milkman riots? Because <laughs> shot Harvey Milk. He was in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it is Stonewall. Stonewall. Oh, okay. Uh, here's, I, I so know. wait, I know. Me, I've never heard of the gay riots, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm really hoping there's video out there somewhere of this. Like, fucking stop it! Like, I don't know how this went. Um, it's <laughs> it's yeah. well doc. Uh, there's it's, plenty of documentaries about it. In fact, the yeah. uh, CNN, CNN, uh, the '60s documentary yep. has a, like I think an entire episode about it. Um, yeah, and, yeah. So uh, the, I, I didn't realize it was in San Francisco. I thought it was in New York. It was in New York. No, it is in New York. I was the one. Oh, okay. Was. I'm not sure where you got San Francisco. I thought you said San Francisco. No, I Harvey, said, Harvey Milk was. Yeah. Look, I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and drinking uh, and? No. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't do that tonight. I don't drink and. Hey. I just drink. Amos. Or and. Amos, your question. The Kama Sutra refers to the 69 position as... The Congress of a blank. Congress of a couple? The Congress of a crow. Oh, that makes sense. I have no a... idea. Really? <laughs> really? No. <laughs> I just wanted to all sound right, smart. All right. You got, <laughs> <laughs> you got shit in your closet. Dude. David. <laughs> Back to you, David. Yes. Uh, or actually, so first round uh, score roundup. Eric has one point. The rest of you suck. <laughs> I actually didn't answer that question. David did. <laughs> but I'll take the point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, David, your question. Who sings the song Summer of 69? Oh. Damn it. Can I steal? Uh, 
Uh, would that be uh, Brian Adams? It would. Indeed, it is Brian Adams. I thought it was Ted Nugent, but what do I know? No, he shoots <laughs> flaming arrows. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that, that song is actually about the 69 position, according to... According to the writer? <laughs> according to, yeah, according to Brian Adams in an interview. Yeah. Uh, like for the whole summer? Hey, I mean, if you got the like stamina summer, to hold off. Yeah, the, the summer where he and his dream woman made love every day is basically what it's about. Huh. All right, Eric, back to you. What is the proper response to a tweet containing the number 69? Eggplant? I don't know. I'm learning a lot, <laughs> I'm learning a lot from this test. I'm learning I'm not as smart about 69 as I thought. <laughs> Eggplant. I only know one thing about 69, apparently. Eggplant. Can you guess what that is? Your final answer is your final answer eggplant. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Correct response. Anybody else? Uh, 69? Uh, nice. 70? Pair nice. of scissors? I don't you know. were looking for nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Luke, your next question. What children's television show debuted in 69? Sesame Street. Very good, very good. Yeah. Which that was a the it, softball. It was uh, it is a fun fact. It was originally intended for the. Um, yes, it was for the psychedelics. Crowd. But they're like, hey, yes. kids really like this. Yeah. Because yeah, how trippy would that be as, with a six foot tall talking bird when you're tripping? <laughs> as a follow on, which uh, children's show uh, came out in '68? Ooh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't know is about that a, the, is that a quote from the show? You, you don't know about the you don't know about the gays, but you know about the kids. I see where you're at. He needed a job what? after he was done shooting people in Nam. He was not a sniper in Nam. That's an urban myth. I looked it up. I know it is. Right. All right, Amos. Um, I know you're going to get this one correct because you spoiled this <laughs> in the uh, the pre game banter. Uh, but here you go. Which music festival took place in Bethel, New York, in '69? Uh, Woodstock? No, that's Snoopy's friend. Of course, of course. Just outside of Woodstock, New York, yep. a small little village called Bethel. Right. Um, the original Lollapalooza. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, now we've got a game. Everyone has one point. <laughs> oh, one point and one question left? <laughs> one question each. Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe I can come up with a bonus question. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. All right, uh, David, your next question. The FCC banned TV and radio advertisement of which product in 69? Oh, ooh. Uh, would that be cigarettes? It is indeed. Coca-Cola. Eric. <laughs> Eric, your next question. Which organization went online with the Internet's precursor in 69? DARPA. Mm, I'm going to give it to you. It's actually ARPA. Oh, sorry. You're right. Take defense off of that. And it's um, advanced research. Is before they uh, became like official defense. It's before the government bought them out. No, Kinda, the government. Yeah. I was government. just going to say IBM. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, but yeah, ARPANET uh, came online uh, with four, connecting four universities in 1969. You're such a nerd. And, and I love that. Which universities were they? I'm sure it was the Ivy Leagues because they're a bunch of nerds. I know it was one in California. Berkeley. It was yeah. probably Cal. Berkeley, Stanford, or, uh, yeah. uh, Harvard, Caltech. and MIT. MIT was what you know, I yep. think those are the four. I thought the former California. vice president California invented the Institute Internet. Technology wasn't there. Man. No, it, 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 was, it was odd because they're like, yeah, we've got four universities, but they were kind of located together because Harvard and MIT are only like 100 miles from each other. I thought that's, that's, not really, that's a really long way yeah, to run a cable really in nineteen sixty nine. Not by telephone line. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the infrastructure was there. Yeah. <laughs> we just weren't using it right. Now we have free porn. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and bullshit like the Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Luke, your next question. Which medical procedure enabling human conception debuted in sixty nine? Artificial insemination? In vitro fertilization. Oh, in vitro. Yeah. You were close. Oh, yeah. 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 
Okay. Uh, Amos, your final question. I'm not scared. What's the score? It's two Eric, to Eric's two winning. to one to one. Mm-hmm. David Eric's actually winning. I'm out. I'm good. Two to it's two to one to one. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yep. All right. So Amos, uh, to, to tie <laughs> it to, <laughs> name Mario Puso's best-selling novel published in 69. Who? Uh, I know this. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> I don't know the last one. But Mario Puso. Watch your language. Right. <laughs> That's what I thought. Famous novel? Was it a famous novel? Yeah, it was a bestseller. In 1969. Yep. Yeah, people read. <laughs> Lots of people read it. Off tablets. So much even. so that they made that some hired Francis Ford Coppola to uh, um, make a couple of movies about it. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Well, with that clue, <laughs> I'm just going to have to go with The Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, <laughs> fine. Um. I should have hit the, the uh, other button sooner uh, because the, uh, a spoiler popped up in the chat. Thank you, literally, Nadia, for that. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> I, 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 I like how he told me to look in the chat in the chat. He used the chat to look tell me to chat, look in the man. chat. <laughs> it's like if I call you to leave a message to tell you to pick up your phone. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to do a tiebreaker here because um, the score was two to two to two to one. So really, there's only one true loser here, and that would That's be right. you. Yes, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> so good job, guys. That was a that was a fun uh, trip down the. <sighs> More importantly, Kent, if we got two out of three, that gives us a sixty-six percent. Means three of That's us got the D. Sixty-eight. <laughs> and sixty-six and three is sixty-nine. The three. Told you oh I'm a numbers god. guy. Oh my god! Oh my god! It all comes around. <laughs> oh. Told you I'm a numbers guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we have the. Uh, uh, oh, oh, um, hmm. <laughs> how to phrase? How to phrase? How to phrase? Phrasing. Amongst all the people we've had on the show, there are a few guests that have spoken about something that is truer to our hearts and something that we feel more passionately about than the Remedy, Remedy Alpine folks. So when we had the opportunity to have them back on, we jumped at that chance and added one um, because fuck it. That's what we do. (laughs) So, gentlemen, what is Remedy Alpine up to lately and what are we what's going to be happening in the future? And where are you at? Because last time you guys were here was a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. So so for people that have forgotten or for our new listeners, uh, briefly, like in a couple of sentences, just explain what Remedy Alpine is and then and then go on with what what you've got going on. Oh, these I, days. I, I, I think I think I think no, I think Luke has to because David did last time. Oh, OK. Uh, so <laughs> Remedy Alpine, we um, we seek to get veterans into the outdoors um, to utilize um, outdoor recreation to create a therapeutic environment where they can just heal. Um, primarily what we're trying to do is combat isolation in veterans, which is, um, studies have shown um, leads to higher risk of suicidal ideation or um, suicidal attempts. Um, so we try and combat that by creating a um, safe environment for them to not only get outside and experience nature, but also build relationships um, that foster enduring um, friendships that can then build um, against that, that isolation that those of us that are military veterans know we, we all struggle with. So that's what we do. Um, And we do that through outdoor recreation that could be um, overnight backpacking trips here in the Alaskan backcountry or um, uh, just camping, um, overnight camping trips, uh, day hikes here in the uh, Anchorage, what I call the Anchorage Bowl um, and uh, Front Range of the Chugach or Talkeetna Mountains, um, Kenai Mountains. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what we do. And through that, um, we're able to uh, combat um, those negative effects in veterans and in ourselves as well. <laughs> that's nice. that's a that's an awesome awesome mission. There are plenty of veterans that that uh, 
that need that service. And uh, it's awesome that you guys provide that. Uh, last time you guys were on, you were preparing for a hike. Uh, or I think you were preparing for one, or did you just come back? We I think we just completed. Um, we did the purge. The purge. That was a negative 10 degree overnight yeah. with a small okay. group. Yeah. That was my first. Uh, that was my first uh, trip with you guys. Yeah. That was a. That was a good one. Yeah. 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 Got a little cold that night. It was all good. <laughs> <laughs> any spooning? No. Well, just air. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the big spoon. <laughs> Whatever it takes to keep warm. And the big spoon. <laughs> Um, what have you guys done since? Um, a lot. A lot. <laughs> uh, so Labor Day weekend, uh, kind of working backwards a little bit. Labor Day weekend, we took a group of seven, uh, a composite of Air Force, Army, Navy, um, on a three day backpacking trip through, uh, Crow Pass. Uh, so 25 ish miles from Girdwood into Eagle River over two nights. Um, we did that trek earlier this summer with a group of uh, active duty and reserve Air Force. Uh, so we had a group of nine. Um, Luke was on his own journey over the summer with another similar organization. Yep. Um, in April, we took a team down to Mount Hood, Oregon. Uh, we had five on the mountain, two successfully summited. Um, and a lot of what we've been doing is we kind of hit a tactical pause to do business development, like what we were talking about earlier in the show is, you know, uh, once we first got started, we hit that first tactical pause to get the business legitimate, to file our articles of incorporation with the state, to get our business license. Um, we got a, a lot of attention around that. Um, and then uh, we were working towards the, the nonprofit channel. Um, and quite honestly, in the last 90 days, our board has grown. We're bringing on, by the end of the year, we'll have a board of six. We've got a grant writer on the board now. We're adding a couple more positions. Uh, our articles are filed with our, our the application is filed for our 501c3 status with the IRS. Probably about another four or five months out on that. There's about nine to 12 month wait in processing because it's the IRS. And we love you, IRS, if you're out there listening <laughs> to Ritual Misery. <laughs> Approve our shit. So, um, and actually, I think uh, I'll, with everything that's gone on and about to go on, the biggest thing that we have coming up is the end of the month. Um, we have a strategic planning session with two-day planning session. The three uh, principals, uh, the three owners of the company, which are us three, will be day one where we're sitting out and lining out a five-year plan, building out the finances, the activities, the strategic calendar, and then the second day we bring our board of directors in and we present our five-year plan to our board and the board approves it. And then we... Hopefully. Uh, hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then some other things over the summer, we were blessed with a donation from a, a, of a, some private donors uh, that have enabled us to get uh, uh, gear. So not only do we provide all of our services for, for free, to veterans, but if they don't have gear, we provide all the equipment for them. We have tents, single day packs, multi day packs, air pads, trek poles, jet boil stoves. We have literally about 15 tough boxes full of toys in my basement. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, a lot has happened in the last year and a half. Uh, we're the center of a uh, fellowship project for a George W. Bush fellow. Um, and just a, a lot of things happening for us. Uh, we're working on our first national contract that we hope to be able to complete and execute. So uh, we should actually be hired to uh, operate four trips next year for a private uh, for another veteran foundation. Um, so yeah, we've been busy and we all work full time and just, yeah. So if, well, if somebody wanted to to help out themselves, if they if they are like, you know what, this sounds awesome, and I would like to to give something to this organization, is there a place that they can go do that? Um, uh, so yes, uh, if they want to give time, which I think right now is probably the most valuable thing, we have a volunteer program that we're launching this month, where we'll have uh, three different categories of volunteers. Yep. Uh, some base camp volunteers to help out with an event similar to what I'll talk about in a minute that we're uh, participating and co-sponsoring with uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Um, so we'll have some people that go to public events. Uh, a little bit higher category is some backcountry guides. Uh, the three of us are the only guides right now. Uh, so 
that's a little bit more of a detailed process before we trust the lives of veterans in the hands of somebody else right. with our logo on it. Um, uh, they have to spend some time with us and kind of prove themselves. And Luke, as our operations officer, is finishing up the, the work on uh, that training process and what that looks like. And then uh, we're seeking professional volunteers as well, uh, licensed clinical social workers, psychologists, attorneys and accountants, attorneys and accountants if you want to volunteer um <laughs> so uh so we have other opportunities and then uh hopefully by the end of the month we will have a donate button if you can't give time but you want to give cash uh, give till it hurts uh we should have a donate button on our website by the end of the month uh that's it seems easy, yeah, Eric. But it's easy. not as easy as one would seem, <laughs> even for the right. technologically savvy. Come on, Eric. I have a I have a donate <laughs> button on my website. <laughs> well, guess what you'll help me do next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that website is remedyalpine.org. Yep, that's right. So please make sure to check it out. And something else that David didn't really touch on that I was actually excited about that we did last year was we coordinated with the VFW and reached out to a lot of different veteran support organizations yeah. and did a, uh, a veteran outreach event where we invited organizations like the Gold Star Peak, which is a new organization out here in Alaska where a mountain was named after the Gold Star families. Um, and, but it was just awesome to see like Team Rubicon and Winter Warrior Project and yep. you know just a lot of great organizations. And they basically set up in this uh, horseshoe kind of setup. And veterans came in, went around all the different tables, got more information, found groups to connect with. So I was actually really excited about that. And that was yeah. something David came up with and made it happen. And, you know, I hope we do it every year. We've been asked by the VFW to do it again. We, we hosted it. We co-hosted it with the VFW Post 9785 in Eagle River, um, Alaska. And the concept was kind of simple. There's, there's a lot of very good organizations that have different programs for veterans. We obviously do alpinism and mountain climbing and backcountry backpacking and camping. Uh, Alaska Healing Hearts does really good fishing programs. Um, fishing, hunting, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and so there's, uh, you know, uh, Team Red, White, and Blue, Wind Warrior Project. There's, there's a ton of them in the area. Yep. But, and they all fit a niche. And my thought behind developing this was that, you know, instead of having veterans have to figure out where everybody is that could take time, we're trying to fight isolation. That's the biggest thing that's a, a producer of anxiety and depression with veterans is they just don't want to get their ass off the couch and hunt this stuff out, is if we invited all the organizations into one spot and they could set up a table, they could have the representatives there, they could have some swag and give some shit out, and then we invite the veterans. That's a one-stop shop to figure out what works for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the vet center there. We had VA health system. Uh, we had the disability law center actually set a, a, a veterans law attorney specialist there to be able to talk to veterans if they had problems with their claim with the VA, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like some of the ones that we've already mentioned, wounded warrior team, red, white, and blue, obviously remedy Alpine, gold star peak. Um, so it became a one-stop shop for veteran services, um, that was the Saturday before Super Bowl Sunday in February, and we'll be doing it again. I think it is uh, that date is uh, February 1st, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the VFW uh, chipped in. They had uh, officers come in and cook hamburgers and hot dogs, so there was it's a free chow for folks. Yep. Um, and we're doing that again in 2020. So the Saturday prior to Super Bowl Sunday, which should be Saturday, February 1st, if I'm not mistaken, not looking at my phone. Uh, we're going to do another Veterans Outreach Fair, and I hope that this is the last year that we actually fit in the basement of the VFW and that we're forced into finding a new venue. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, that, I didn't... Yep. That, that was something that we all came up with. Uh, I was kind of the impetus to it, but mm-hmm. it took the whole team to actually execute that, so... Um, uh, yep, it looks like uh, Saturday, February 1st. Yep. 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 And on top of that, uh, we made our rounds to like Chris Kyle Patriots Hospital. That's an inpatient uh, PTSD and substance abuse for military and veterans. So we go and talk about our program to them and say, hey, come out. When you leave this facility, when you're done with your treatment, use us as a way to kind of progress and move forward instead of sliding back. Uh, we've been asked to go to the domiciliary where uh, a lot of homeless veterans kind of end up there kind of fighting their demons. And, you know, they want to use us as a, a tool to kind of help people progress, progress and get out of you know the negative things that they're doing in their life and trying to find something positive. Yeah. Um, so this weekend, uh, we've got a, a, a good event coming up. Uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is a national 501c3 organization whose sole purpose is to uh, uh, raise suicide awareness and work on suicide prevention. 
obviously it's not our uh, our facing initiative, but if you if you look at our initiatives, if you look at our programs and what we're trying to fight, at the end of the day, we're part of the charge that's fighting that 20 a day to 22 a day veteran suicide uh, epidemic. Um, so it's a it's a commemorative walk or a remembrance walk. So it's not a race. Uh, people aren't showing up to run as fast as they can. It's actually kind of a somber event uh, where you're walking in memory of uh, either your own battle, um, the battle that somebody else that you know fought and was successful or is currently successful, or maybe the the battle of a family friend or loved one that you that they lost their battle. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's um, at the softball fields across from uh, Martin Luther King and Elmore. Uh, in Midtown Anchorage, uh, starts uh, sign up starts at nine, opening ceremonies at ten, uh, and it ends by about twelve thirty. So, not a big chunk of your day for a good cause to come out. Remedy Alpine will be out there. We'll have our our booth set up where we'll have some of our brochures, and the three of us will be out there um, talking about our programs, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll be connecting with folks, yeah. um, trying to make a difference in the community. That's that's what it's all about. Is yeah. just helping the veteran community. Uh, our mantra is veterans serving veterans. Um, and to Luke's point a moment ago, it is, there is a little bit of selfish uh, intent. Uh, this is our own therapy as well. Uh, I know when I, uh, when my demons come out of their dark closet um, and rear their head with me, I need to go to the mountain to make it right. Yep. Uh, that's where I find my peace. That's where I find my solitude. The fucking cell phone doesn't ring out there. Uh, I can't get bothered um, if I go far enough off trail, um, you know, and th- that self-discovery and that internal dialogue allows me to try to figure things out and work things out in my head. Um, and when I see like the Crow Pass trip that we just did over Labor Day weekend, when I see a bunch of veterans for 26 miles that are embracing the suck with a 30 to 40 pound pack over a mountain through a snow field, the first night we had... Was it 38 degrees about? Yeah. 30 to 50 mile an hour winds. I mean, they literally got the Alaskan experience and they woke up laughing, right? They're stuck in a tent on the side of a mountain, getting their asses blasted off in rain and cold and gale force winds. Yep. And everyone woke up in such a great mood. And then they, they freaking trucked out 11 more miles, crossed a river. It was the cold. We've Eric and I've crossed that, and Luke, we've all crossed that river multiple times. Yeah, that was the fucking coldest that river has ever been. I it's because the, it was because the ambient air temperature yeah. was cold. It was thirty-two point five <laughs> degrees, is my guess. Yes, thirty-two. Yeah. It was sludge. It was not that bad. It was moving sludge. It was no, almost granted, freezing. I went across that river as fast as I possibly could. You were on water. He was like Jesus. Yeah. He, he was, was like on running. Water. So, but in the. The bonding that happened, the stories that they were sharing, um, it, it was awesome to see. I mean, yeah. and that, was the f- that is the quintessential story about what Remedy Alpine does and why we exist. But I want to add, the outreach for me has been phenomenal. I know, I mean, I'll never forget when we were doing the Black Diamond Block, par- the Black Diamond block Party. Yep. We were out talking to some of the, the people walking by, and we had a, a gentleman come up with his wife kind of like next to him, kind of hugging around his waist and asked us about our program and... So we're like, oh, are, are you a veteran, sir? And he's like, uh, no, my son served and he was killed in Iraq. And yeah. here's, here's I want to donate to your program. Yeah. And, and I'll never forget that moment. So the yeah. outreach for me is just as important as going out and yeah. doing the hikes. It, 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 good segue because we have some, some pretty cool outreach programs as well. Um, uh, every Wednesday morning, because we are a, a quasi-former military organization. We, we serve veterans, so everything we do has the, the, the stink of military on it, right? So. Every Wednesday morning, we do a PT session where we walk up Mount Baldy and Eagle River. Um, 5 a.m.? At 5 a.m. Um, and the second and uh, fourth uh, Thursday of every month, except for tonight, because we were invited to be on the show, we meet at a coffee house in Eagle River. That's kind of where our base of operations is right now. Um, just to, you know, putting your life on the line, getting on the mountain with people that you don't know, uh, that's a trust thing. And let's face it, folks with, you know, post-traumatic stress issues, trust is a big thing for them. So we've enabled an opportunity for folks to get to come out to meet us before they decide if they want to get on a trail with us. Yep. Sometimes we'll talk about mountains. Sometimes we'll talk about transition. Sometimes we'll talk sports. 
Sometimes we'll talk movies, whatever. Uh, but it gets people off the couch and introduced to our programs. Um, and then we do schedule some like backcountry one-on-one stuff. Yep. Uh, so people, uh, who don't understand the equipment that don't know what the toys are all about and why they're important, yeah. they can play with it. They can light a jet boil stove and burn themselves. It's fun. <laughs> like Not Michael Adam Jackson. Ah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've been, it's been good. It's been good. So, it's been a busy year yeah. for sure. For sure. And I think, uh, I think as we look at the next, uh, 12 to 18 months, it's just gonna snowball. Like, honestly, um, we've been talking as a board about how, um we are just one or two events away from being um completely and utterly <laughs> overwhelmed um which is which is a good thing that's a good problem to have not a bad one um so that's super exciting i know like um and then we're just having these opportunities that are like literally falling in our laps um a couple weeks ago um there was a group of uh, gold star family members up with the Travis Mannion Foundation, which is a veteran service organization that uh, works with um, Gold Star family members, veterans, all, all sorts, um, but they do a lot of service projects, and they were up in Alaska doing a 10-day a, uh, service project, um, and they wanted to climb Gold Star Peak, and they were having a tough time finding guides to get them up the mountain that had been up there before. And most of what you got to uh, convey to people that come from out of state into Alaska um, and haven't hiked in the mountains is that there's not a bear hiding behind every bush because that's the <laughs> that's the like default is that there's a bear behind every bush and it's going to eat me um, yeah it's only every other bush <laughs> yeah right so um so uh I was able to um find another couple of guides from the community another veteran um to help us guide guide up uh, a group of uh, Gold Star family members up the mountain. And it's just, it's one of those experiences where you take people that um, are are going into the outdoors and experience something um, very therapeutic that's beyond themselves. Um, Gold Star Peak is a 3,750 foot climb from the trailhead um, and it's a done in less than a mile and a half. And that is, that is crazy steep elevation over, over a very short period of time. And you got these 65, 70 year old parents of fallen soldiers and airmen, sailors and Marines that are, that are climbing this mountain and they are gutting it out because it's something bigger than themselves. Um, and that is super selfish of me, but that was, those are some of the best experiences that I have in my life. Um, because you're seeing, um, you're seeing people literally heal in front of you through um, the outdoors, and that's super cool. And, and a real quick shout out to the the founder and president of Gold Star Peak Foundation, oh, Mr. Yeah. Kirk, Kirk Alkire, yeah. um, who worked through all the the different organizations and native corporations in the state of Alaska to get uh, past Alaska, and then the federal government to get the mountain named Gold Star Peak. Um, there's an incredible story, uh, about the monument, uh, that's built on top of the mountain. There's another monument that they're raising money for to get put up there. And I've, I've been on top of quite a few mountains, uh, in my climbing career. And, you know, uh, I have quite a few gold stars that I carry around in my heart with me. Um, as a former combat medic, uh, unfortunately I saw gold stars at the moment that they became gold stars. Um, and Luke was with me. The first and second time I tried to climb the mountain. The first time we got <laughs> avalanched off in three avalanches in one day. Yeah, she was angry that the, day. The mountain did not want to be climbed that day. Uh, but we finally, the three of us actually made it up um, this spring, uh, this spring uh, in March. And there's something magical about this mountain. If you, if you come to Alaska, if you're not in Alaska, and you get a chance or you want the chance, we'll be happy to take you up the mountain. Absolutely. Um, if you have the weight or the pressure of a comrade that, that, that didn't make it home from a deployment and you want some closure, this, this mountain is magical. And what Kirk Alkire has done and his group has done to help yeah. create this, this place, um, of healing, um, it's incredible. And we're, we're happy to work with, and there, from time to time we climb with the gold star team or yeah. they're taking folks up and it's an honor to work with them. 
Uh, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Kirk and his yeah, group. Absolutely. Uh, because that is, uh, that's something that we regularly hike and climb and take folks up. And uh, it, it's an important part of our, our program. So, And where is Gold Star Peak? Um, so it is out by Aklutna Lake. If you uh, get off um, the Glen Highway in the Anchorage Bowl area and head towards Aklutna Lake, there's a very small parking pull-off on the right side of the road at mile marker 4.5. Uh, by small, I mean, it'll fit about four cars. Yeah. So ride with your buddy. Um, so, and then the trailhead yeah. cut, sorry, Luke. No. The, the so trailhead. Amos, you look at it every day. Yeah. Um, you got pioneer peak mm -hmm. and then you got the twin peaks, mm -hmm. that flat mountain next to it. Mm -hmm. That's Mount P O W M I A and gold star peak is the, f the westernmost summit point of that mountain. Gotcha. And then, yeah. yeah, the trailhead's at mile marker five along the Aklutna Lake Road. And the mountain looks flat from the angle that we look at it from here in the valley. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the other side going up it, it's, it's anything but. <laughs> What's the elevation? Isn't it about like 35 degree incline pretty much the whole time? 35 for the, first, uh, for the first two legs of the climb. And then it's a 45 degree angle above. Yeah. It's yeah. it's legit the last <laughs> the last uh, eight hundred feet. So you can't we can go we can go do that if you ever make your ass up here to Alaska. Oh yeah, it's a quick easy uh, day climb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking loser. Oh, that sounds, <laughs> <laughs> if I ever make it north of the wall, uh, that sounds awesome. I would definitely be interested. Oh, uh, all right. Yeah. Um, now, if people want to get a hold of you guys individually, where can they look to? You guys on the Facebooks, you on the Twitters, you just uh, go to the contact us page on remedyalpine.org or what? Yeah, the contact us page uh, through remedyalpine.org um, goes to a, um, I guess, universal org box, org org email. box, org box. Or organization box. Um, and if they're trying to get in contact with uh, any of us individually, we're all profiled through the uh, through remedyalpine.org. Um, and you can stalk us on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, we do have a Facebook page. We do have Instagram. Yep. Um, we do have Twitter. We're not on Twitter as much. No. Um, and uh, we're not so good with the words. <laughs> yeah. the The general delivery mailbox is just remedyalpine at gmail .com. Right now, we are working to get uh, some actually at remedyalpine.org email addresses set up. I believe we have one. We've if been only you on. had a computer guy that could do all that. Who isn't going through an inspection? Oh, who, was, <laughs> who doesn't volunteer at Window Warrior Project? A lot of feeling hard. Now all the excuses. EOD Warrior out. Foundation. <laughs> yeah, a two-year-old. So, so we've uh, Alaska's been burning this year, oh and my gosh. like Dave spent uh, what a couple days last week. Yeah, I spent a couple of days last week time with, with uh, Team Rubicon. With Team Rubicon uh, doing some site clearance, so the heavy equipment teams can get into grade. Uh, my wife. Uh, we, I don't think we highlight our wives enough no, in our lives. Never. My wife was out there for four days with uh, with Team Rubicon. It, her little ass was ripping a chainsaw, dropping trees left and right, uh, meeting with homeowners. Uh, she told me a story about this Vietnam vet who this dude uh, lost everything, and he's still on his property living in a tent. Uh, swears he's going to have a cabin rebuilt before winter, and I'm like, dude, that clock is ticking. <laughs> um Great people, uh, really emotional impact to see the devastation with the fires that happened in Alaska this year. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's yeah. Um, most of us, like Eric mentioned, uh, the plethora of organizations <laughs> that he cross pollinates with. Luke and I have our, 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 our projects that we work with as well and other yeah. veteran organizations. And I think that's, uh, that's kind of at the heart of, that's not exclusive to a remedy Alpine thing. If you look at the veterans organizations in Alaska, we're all part of two or three different organizations and we all cross pollinate, uh, to try to make, uh, the veteran community as tight as we can. Uh, it's, it's the only way we get stuff done up here. So, yeah, I don't know if I really stressed over the summer, but I might be immune to the smell of campfire <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's been awful. There were days when the sun was still up, but it would look like it was like, dark nighttime because of all the smoke coming yeah. down from the fires and things yeah. like that um my neighbor brian is a firefighter he spent a week and a half out there without even coming home and it's only like 20 miles away um like they were humping it this summer the firefighters and, and uh and other people uh that, that that help with those things the forestry service all that they, they really worked their ass off this summer and yep. 
Um, yeah, it's uh, if I ever smell a campfire again, it'll be <laughs> an amazing thing because my nose is just completely done to it, you know. Yep. All right. Um, hey, Kent, uh, what else we got going on that uh, that we need to tell people about? I know we have one big event coming up soon that we need to tell people about. Yeah, I mean it's only September, um, right? But right around the corner is going to be New Year's Eve, man. Yes. And, uh, we've got the the big fundraiser of the year new year's eve streamathon coming up so we're going to be asking for streamers very soon yep. i actually cracked open the files to prepare for this year's planning which might be a record yeah i think it <laughs> well besides like the first year the first year i like like oh my god i don't even know what i'm doing here like, <laughs> uh, uh, so but, so I, those of you that don't know uh we we kent and i host the well we used to call it the ritual misery streamathon now it's the diamond club streamathon or the stream team streamathon I guess it would be now. Uh, 27 hours of live streaming yep. um, in order to make sure that, one, no one needs to spend New Year's Eve alone. There's a lot of people out there that <laughs> That's right. that have uh, awesome. that don't have families and don't have things going on. And New Year's, New Year's is like the one holiday where we can break away from our own families for a couple hours. We uh, we share movies. We, do, we play games. We review beers we do all kinds of things but for 27 hours straight there will be a this. live presence in the chat room <laughs> so that no one on the planet no matter what time zone you're in can uh you don't have to spend new year's eve by yourself yep uh at the same time we'll be raising money uh as we always do kent who do we raise money for every year well two um, of the three years we've done it and we'll be doing it again this year <laughs> Mm-hmm. So the the recurring uh, donation center that we use is extralife.org. Uh, and and who, what, what do they help with? Yeah, they help with, with the Children's Miracle Network um, hospitals. Nice. So uh, there's lots of kids out there that uh, get illnesses and, and um, uh, things that they their families are not fortunate enough to, to be able to um, you know financially support. And extralife.org. Uh, helps make sure that they have money to pay for those things. Yep. It's a wonderful, wonderful organization. And if if you've been around fundraising with with anybody streaming on the internet, I'm sure you are familiar with the organization already. But they are right. awesome. We we intend to use them again this year. Um, but yeah, we we're going to be looking for people to stream. Um, I'm going to be uh, in our Discord um, uh, bit.ly/rmp Discord if you want to get in on this but i'm going to be in the discord asking for volunteers for uh different positions um advertising and we just played the 69 uh, game <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but anyway so i was yeah, in so track check, <laughs> so so, so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll need streamers managers graphics designers uh anybody that wants to make some transitions All, uh yep. and, and if any if you can't stream that day but you want to help out i guarantee there are ways that we have that you can help out for that absolutely um, so get in uh, bit.ly rmp discord yep. if you're interested in any and, of that and we have raised over five thousand dollars thus far yep in the last three years yep and uh i want to i want to drastically increase that number. yeah so, so not being not being funny but what technology requirements are there to be a streamer for you to participate honestly you a yeah. in a webcam or about- or you need to know someone who knows how to stream to twitch yeah or you don't even need a computer you could stream from your smartphone yep there's yeah you, it, essentially if technology you, like the barrier to entry for streaming is is almost nothing now Okay. If you have half an hour, an hour, and you want to be part of the streamathon and help raise money for Children's Miracle Networks, we can we can, we will we will find a way to get you on. One year we had someone Skype into, was it Skype into me or Skype into you, Kent? And then we broadcast we them from, from there. Mountain. We should come. Oh from yeah, Street. absolutely. So yeah, we can. Yeah, we that's, can that's we can not- make it happen. Um, so on site right now, what we're talking about is if Remedy Alpine could stream in from the top of Gold Star Peak. Heck yeah. We that, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, with no avalanche really danger. If, right. if you have an internet signal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, great. I, it's great signal out there. Okay. <laughs> then, yes. Like, let's continue to yeah. discuss because I, I want to make that happen. All right, Kent. Uh, we'll can be, be bundled up. It'll be cold, yeah. but we can do it. <laughs> where can Thanks. people find you, Kent? Yeah, check me out on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche. If you uh, prefer a separate. Uh, social media outlet um 
Del Noche or Del Noche 77 is probably where I'm at. So search for me there. What about you, Amos? You can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. And if you prefer a different media outlet, a different social media outlet, then fuck off and go to Twitter. Because <laughs> that's the only place I'm at and that's the only place I'm answering DMs. Uh, you can find the show on Twitter because it's the only, only social media that matters to me. At Ritual Misery, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. And of course, you can join the conversation in our Discord because that's the only one that matters to Kent. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Uh, yeah, you can find all these links and more over our website at ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Cruise on by there uh, in Competech.com to get your own free music. And thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, for you, for Remedy Alpine, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> I can hear from your headphones, so. Hello. Hello.